Hey everybody, so I expect this video to probably be pretty long because I'm going to show a battle or two fighting against Abram spam and how enjoyable that can be. And then I'm going to show that that's not the worst thing you can encounter and I'll show that with my Abrams. So if you want to keep watching the first battle fighting against the Abram spam, just keep on watching. And if you want to skip ahead to the more clickbaity part of the video about what could possibly worse, be worse than Abram spam, go ahead and skip ahead to this timer that you see on your screen right here, and I'll see you guys in the rest of the video. Okay, so on the advice of one of my Discord members who was complaining that the AMX-40 had been buffed beyond belief and was impossible to destroy, I thought I'd better get out there and drive it. And of course, I encounter Abrams, and uh, well, you'll see how things go. So in the interest of keeping this part of the video as short as I possibly can, I'm going to show you all of it, but I will, as usual, employ tricks such as speeding things up to cover the parts where I'm just traveling or just driving or, you know, long repair times. So, here we go. So we arrive safely at the B point. We get here with a couple of teammates. We start capturing. I get into a pretty decent little hull down position here, sort of. Was about to back out and make sure my teammates actually made it into the cap and then realized, yeah, they're gonna make it no problem, so. Pretty decent little hull down spot right here to watch out for enemy coming in. We finish the cap and I start moving to reinforce my gang over at A where they seem to be having a little bit of trouble. Plus I can come in from the side shot goes past me, a shot hits me and doesn't kill me. I finish off an Abrams coming in, and I realize that the 2A4 right behind me has just been destroyed, so time to turn around and go back. So we've got an Abrams coming in close to B, so the guys at A are just going to be on their own. I've got to go help turn around and see what I can do about the B point. There's our friend the Abrams right across the bridge. I think my heat FS round actually detonated on the fence and then the uh, shrapnel hit him. He dropped smoke. I thought he might have been damaged and was repairing, so I focused my attention on trying to spot the enemy helicopter that I could hear. Which could be friendly for all I know. I'm not sure if there were any Soviet helicopters up or not. But anyway, the Soviets are on my team and they start capturing B. There is our friend the Abrams. I tried to burn through his lower front plate. My mistake. Should have hit him in the side. And he hits me, sets me on fire, but watch this second shot that he fires. So it bounces. So it's not that the AMX-40 is not able to withstand shots from the Abrams, and it's not that the Abrams is impossible to destroy, because I killed the first one I ran into, and he did bounce a shot off of me in my AMX-40. So the vehicles are relatively even. But... If you get enough points to come back in an aircraft, which is going to be something I discuss in the second half of this video, a great tactic for destroying enemy helicopters is to get as low to the ground as you can and come in underneath them. I mean, that's a great tactic for destroying enemy, any enemy aircraft, but it's particularly effective on helicopters because if they drop down to the ground, if they see you coming in at altitude, they drop down to the ground, it gets a lot more difficult to see them. So look up, shoot up is always better in just about any situation. Here we go, pop-up surprise attack on the Cobra, who did actually see it coming. I pulled up a little sooner than I should have, but I was still plenty close up. Now watch this sequence right here. Hit the Cobra, kill him, lose my wing, and manage to just get my guns down onto the P-47 and take him out as well. I actually took out the P-47 after he shot off my wing, so I was pretty proud of that. Not a, not a bad little rapid sequence there.
Now that happened to give me enough points to come back in my second French aircraft, so since I knew there was another helicopter up that I was hoping to destroy when I ran into the P-47, I repeated my attack profile and went after the second helicopter. And we locate our second target, wipe it out before it can do too much damage to our team, and we roll back around to where, during the fast forward sequence there, we had captured the C point, and now you see they're taking the C point back, so let's go employ these bombs. Now I come in a little bit too low here and actually clip my plane on the top of this turret. But I got him. And watch the chat here. It's interesting. It's not bad or anything, it's just genuinely interesting. He said it landed under him, so I went back and recorded a couple replay angles so you could see it. Because I thought, well that's interesting. I didn't, it wasn't intentionally dropped under him, but watch just how close it actually was. And this next angle coming up is even better. You can really see it on the second angle. I just left this angle in because it was funny with my spinning airplane. But yeah, check this out right here. Can't get the bomb too much closer. Now, like I said, it was accidental. It wasn't intentionally dropped under him like that, but it was pretty perfect. I'm not claiming I did that by skill. It was, I just wanted to drop the bomb close enough and kill him. It just happened to fall one behind him and one directly in front of him. And now we come back to the point where we've got enemy closing in on our spawn very, very closely. You can see them. Just up in front of me on the mini-map, there's an Abrams within the smoke cloud here who just knocked out a teammate. I actually marked the map too far behind because I mis-noticed where he was on the mini-map. He's actually in that smoke cloud. I switched over to smoke rounds to be able to fire another smoke round at him, and that's before I noticed an enemy helicopter up. So I come to a stop because, of course, non-stabilized gun here. Once I recognize that there's an enemy helicopter up and get ready to fire some long-distance APF-SDS rounds at it. He's in a nice hover. Get a good aim first shot. It's just a little high. Of course, my second shot was reloading as smoke, so I switched that back over. Readjust my aim, expecting to get killed at any moment. He's in a beautiful sitting still hover, just barely drifting to the side a little, and I actually got him. And promptly got destroyed by another one of the worst aspects of fighting against highest tier Americans, and that's the bullpups. So you've got, and so as far as the Abrams go, real quick here. It's not so much that the Abrams are difficult to destroy. They are difficult to destroy, though it's possible. It's more the fact that there are so many of them coming at you at once. And as evidence, there's one destroying the Abrams, or an Abrams destroying our IT-1 right in our spawn. And then I lose my track and get destroyed by that same Abrams again, firing from right outside our spawn. There he is. You can see how close he is. You'll see him on the minimap in a second, too. There he is. Now he happens to get killed before I respawn, thankfully, by the bagel panzer right next to me, but then the AGM bullpup launcher comes back. Now the big difference here between what I'm calling the, you know, the thing that's worse to face than uh, enemy Abram spam, which if you haven't guessed or figured out yet, I'm talking about helicopters with standoff ATGM missile launches. The, I guess, advantage that you have over the FJ-4Bs with the AGM-12 bullpups is they cannot come to a hover and stop, whereas the helicopters can. That's the big advantage the helicopters have over the 
uh, AGM-12 bullpup launching FJ-4Bs is that Abram, or the helicopters rather, can come to a hover outside of any defensive fire range besides aircraft and just spam off missiles. And with the AH-1Z and the MI-35, which you're going to see in the second half of the video, it's they've got 16 of them apiece, and it's just disgusting what they can do with them currently. Now, I was lucky enough in this battle to be able to spawn in my uh, fighters in my first aircraft and come back in and deal with the helicopters, which is the only real way you can deal with the helicopters if they're sitting at standoff distances right now. So... Uh, the rest of this battle, I'll just speed out, and then we'll get on to the second half, which is the uh, helicopter standoff ATGM missile launching spam, which is far, far worse to deal with than an enemy team of all spamming Abrams rushing into your spawn. First things first, if you have not already seen the Devil Dog Gamers video from last week called War Thunder AH-1Z Tank Killer, then open up another tab in your browser right now, go to the Devil Dog Gamers YouTube channel, find his video from 30 September that's titled, like I said, War Thunder AH-1Z Tank Killer, start from about 8 minutes and 10 seconds, and watch, you know one or two or three of the battles he shows from that point on through the rest of his video. That will give you a real good perspective from the helicopter point of view of what happened during the rest of my battle and my video here. You can watch it at the end after this video if you want to, but I think it'll help if you can see it from... I don't know, actually, it may be better to watch it afterwards. But either way, either watch it now or watch it at the end of this, and then... uh We'll come back and continue on with the rest of my video here. Okay, so originally I live narrated this battle as I recorded it because I had a 150% RP and a 300% Silver Line booster on. And I was hoping for the same kind of results I'd been seeing Abrams teams get both for and against me. And decided it would probably make for a good video, assuming that the results were good enough. The results were not what I obviously intended, but... Uh, Anyway, it was good enough to turn it into a video. So I'm going to play my live audio commentary over this video. And any time that I'm going to talk now during the editing portion of the video, I will either freeze the video like I have right now. Or if it's not practical to freeze the video, I will lower the audio volume of the narration track down so low that it won't be competing or interfering with my post commentary that I'm going to do. So it should be clear. For those of you who really enjoy ASMR, that will be the closest you're ever going to get to an ASMR video from me. So enjoy it while you can. But on to serious things. We'll start out with the battle. It's pretty routine up until a certain point, And then we'll pause it again and uh, pick up some post commentary from there. All right. Let's go get us a capture. Good start for a 150% RP and 300% line boost. Yeah, baby. So we know what it's like to be on the receiving end of the Abrams spam. Let's see how things go from the other side. Hopefully... The same way for the Abrams team. Can can you seriously? Can you really just can you just drive straight? Why is driving straight so hard for people in this game? Okay, Russia, Germany, Japan. Don't really need that extra ammo, so... Head towards C. The sun is on our side, but it's not exactly doing us any favors with these shadows, so... Yeep! Okay. 
can't I see it? Hit non pen. Lost my loader. Of course. Of course I lost my loader. Okay. Not the guy who just got killed, so let's be careful. Oh, my squad mate got hurt again. No! Trying to get to my teammate to help him repair. Great, it's the one that just took out my squad mate too. God, you're a teammate. Oh my god, he's right on top of us. Okay, so nothing too crazy or game-breaking there, right? Pretty standard high-tier 10.0 type battle fare, right? So, here's something I do want you to notice, though. Look at the spawn point cost for my aircraft there. They're both at 720. And now compare that to this picture I took from a different battle. Yeah, so... A tier 5 or 6 fighter aircraft or strike attack aircraft, either one, costs the exact same as a tier 1 reserve aircraft from pre-World War II. That is an issue. Now, I didn't get enough spawn points with just a capture and a little bit of damage dealt, a little bit of damage taken to be able to come back in an aircraft, and that obviously cost us terribly in this battle, as you'll see here shortly. But... That's a big issue that fighter aircraft from any era cost the same as any other fighter aircraft from any other era, no matter what, no matter what the loadout. And that's definitely one of the issues that I run into here. Anyway, back to the battle, if you can call it that. How is an Abrams scene getting wiped off the map? Especially with a helicopter. Apparently it's not a friendly. Oh, for the love of God. Take your time, gun. We got all day for you to raise up. Oh god, he's higher than I can aim. Amazing. We've captured most of the strategic zones. I can't raise high enough to shoot at him. Some kind of a thing to boost me upwards to shoot at him. Are you kidding me? I'm getting straight by a jet. Did we not have enough? Amazing. know where I can elevate myself upwards to shoot at that hind. He is so high up there hovering. Not sure how many missiles he gets.
Apparently he's not out of them yet, though. I can't get a shot at him. He's up higher. He's up higher than my machine gun, or my, uh... He's been hit, but... God, he's still firing missiles. Look at this. That's disgusting. Nobody can reach him. Abram spam is not the worst thing in this game. He's still firing missiles into our spawn. He's just firing missiles into our spawn. My gun won't even come close to high enough. He just, he got another kill. Eight kills. I don't know how many of them are with the helicopter. Not all of them. Because I know he killed, he's the one who killed my squad mate at the beginning of the battle, but. God, the T95E1 is so slow. It's so bad. Oh my god. Didn't hurt him. He just runs right past. He got him. Thank you. stuck here. As if this thing wasn't slow enough. Can't raise high enough to shoot at this Horton either. I might be able to. Okay. What do we got on their team? We got a few left. It's Hugo Chavez's niece. Really thought you were going to be German. we go. There it is. Attack the A point. Look at my reload. Look at my reload. Come on, reload. None of those hit him. Not a single one of those hit him. Good God. It's ridiculous. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's terrible. This is just, it's absolutely terrible. They made the spawn points for airplanes so high that you can't do anything about the helicopters that can just sit way off the map and just spam rockets in. It's idiocy. I gotta try and accelerate now in this little piggy. Before he hits me with another one. None of my rounds can reach him. Come on! This is beyond idiocy. 
It's it's beyond idiocy. Abram spam is not the worst thing in the game right now. It's not even close. For the love of God, somebody kill that God blessed hind. I can't even hit him. I can't even hit him with these rounds. This is so stupid. Can't even hit him. He's just spamming missiles into our spawn. Come on, Gaijin. That ain't low key. This is ridiculous. This is entirely insane. Just sitting up there out, out of range of our anti-air, firing ATGMs into our spawn, directly into our spawn. This is absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Attack the B point. Attention to the map. Attack the B point. See if he makes it. Did somebody kill the hind? Is he knocked out yet? No, he's got 14 kills. How many of those you think are with this hind? This is. It's, it would be one thing if we were just missing him, but we literally cannot reach him with any of our guns. That's ridiculous, Gaijin. It's ridiculous. And cap A from behind a building. Missile just came in at him while he's capping A. There we go. Don't shoot at him, you're just telling him where to aim. Here it comes. There it is. Oh, look. Two more. Come on. You can't let this last. You cannot let this last. You absolutely, you can't let this keep going. There's no way an M18 is gonna, or an M19 is gonna reach either. This is, this is terrible. Here we go. Come on, Gaijin. Gaijin, please, please do something about this. This is, this is way beyond ridiculous right now. Well, this is a big help. On the one hand, I'm glad I recorded this, and on the other hand, I really wish I just hadn't. We got one guy left, and it's this guy who has done nothing in an M4A1. I don't know what he's been doing all battle, but let's watch him get hit by the ATGM to finish things out. which is hilarious. I'll give him that. He's taking B away. There we go. Here it comes. Missile's on the way. Oh, a tank got him. Come on, team kill. Team kill with those missiles. That would be the ultimate ending to this video. We got somebody taking A now. 
Good luck, my friend. Look out low. You're not taking A, though. You're not the one taking A. Get him, XM. Counter missile. Yeah, let's be honest that it's some total bullcrap. Let's be honest about that. It's some total bullcrap. And it needs to end. It needs to stop. This has got to stop, guys. And you cannot possibly allow this to continue. Okay, one more thing. That's what I thought. <laughs> Swing that turret. Protect the Sherman. The level 19 Sherman. Yeah, he's a level 19. Raise your hands if you didn't see that coming. Or that. Come on, guys. Gaijin, you cannot possibly let this continue. Either lower the spawn point cost for airplanes, which would be fine with me, because I would have happily dealt with this guy, or make it so the SPAA can reach him farther. Something. Drop the range on the missiles or something. There are plenty of things I've seen happen in the past to crank the game back down to something resembling... something resembling balanced. If this game's focus is going to be about balance, then we got a big balance problem right here. Oh, now we get an XP-50 out? Why the heck did you not come up in an airplane earlier? My god. Level 13 and a level 19. The enemy's getting closer to victory. We got a level 19 and a level 13 squad. I think one of them bought an XM1. The rest of the tanks they've had have been Shermans and Sherman 105s and M22s. So that's another problem, but it's not the problem we'll consider a main issue here. gonna come back in another tank. He's not quitting. I'll give him that. He's not quitting, but he should be driving these tanks at a slightly lower battle rating. Call 
all your artillery, man. Use your artillery if you have it. <laughs> Boy, I sure am glad I decided to play one more battle tonight. Alright, sincerely, Gaijin, do something to balance this out. Raise the airplane cost back up again. Keep helicopters from being able to spawn first. Something, anything, I don't care. You've got to do something. All right, so here is the part of the video where I offer a few suggestions that I've thought of that are not all-inclusive, nor are they even potentially all-feasible. Just some things that I thought of that could potentially bring this sort of extremely unbalanced, one-sided kind of thing back down into the realm of potentially preventable realism. Now, yes, we did have airplanes get airborne even early on, and they just missed their kill on the chopper, but... That's still, this should have been something we could have dealt with. And you can see that obviously besides the one F-86 who got airborne, there was no other way that we could have possibly dealt with this. I know we can reach them with the APF-SDS gunshots. And I have done that against helicopters in other battles, but this was something where you got one chance to do it. And while... I agree that that's feasible and possible. It's not really realistic to expect somebody to have to make those kind of shots right out of their own spawn. So some thoughts I had were change the spawn cost lower for a pure fighter. No ground attack capability, no rockets, no bombs, no attackers. Just a straight up fighter. Make it something realistic to get after say a single capture point or one to two kills like 300 sp or something a straight up fighter now it could have hvap belts because a lot of some of the fighters do the ta-152 c3 and the horton 229 have got those and um or the the b6r3 gets those without any bombs that it can carry so there are a few aircraft that have, are like the Yak-9T is obviously a very good ground attack aircraft, but it doesn't have any bombs or rockets it can carry. So something along those lines should be something that you should not be able to spawn first. You should have to spawn a tank first and be able to bring that back in a relatively low spawn cost just in case there is a helicopter doing this kind of thing because the more people get AH-1Zs or MI-35s, the more this kind of thing is going to happen. And yes... Obviously, me showing this video is going to let people know they can do that, but I've already seen at least three other content creators have videos out, and I'm sure there's more that I just haven't seen the videos of yet, so... Not like this was a secret or going to stay a secret anyway. Uh, another suggestion I have is don't let helicopters be a first spawn thing. Let helicopters be a earn your spawn cost just like airplanes. Airplanes, if you don't remember or if you weren't in playing the game... Used to be something in RB that you could spawn straight out of the gate in an RB battle, a tank RB battle. And this same exact sort of thing happened. People would come in in super powered cast assets and just utterly annihilate all the tanks and it would totally devastate. You'd see someone go 14, 15, 16 kills in an airplane, never die, and their team win the battle and the rest of their team would have two or three kills in tanks because the airplanes were just destroying everything. That quickly got turned into, you don't get to spawn in an airplane as your first spawn anymore. You have to spawn in a ground vehicle and then earn spawn points, get destroyed or J out, and then you could get in an airplane. That's another suggestion to turn this around to where helicopters can't just be liquefying spawn points as soon as guys are spawning. Uh, we could limit the range on ATGMs. If we're going to limit the ammunition that some vehicles have, that they did have in real life, in the interest of balance, which I feel that we should, hint, 
I don't think that the Abrams needs M8 333 rounds because just because they had them in real life, which I do agree that, yes, it had it in real life and it probably never even used the ammo that it's got in-game. In the interest of balance, if that's what we're going to be, now these are no longer called historical battles like they were once a long time ago. So in the interest of balancing out the game, I'm okay with that. But please, let's let's commit to the balancing of the game if we're going to commit to the balancing of the game. No more talking about, well, we can't have this because of balance, and then we let other things go that are wildly unbalanced. Now, I know that helicopters are still in testing phase, so even though I haven't really flown the helicopters myself yet, this is my feedback as a tank player on helicopters. I think it's valid, as you've seen from a couple of battles here, where we had a lot of... Uh, also, my video from yesterday with Origin, we had a problem with this too, where we were getting shot by a Huey from who was just hovering over his own helicopter base. Like, he literally flew straight up into the air, like in a cylinder above his airfield, fired off his missiles, and then descended right back down to land and reload them. Now, in that battle, I was able to get airplanes and get in there and shoot down the helicopter, but I also had a lot more ground cover buildings and stuff on the Cologne map to where we could fight. I mean, if you went and watched uh, Devil Dog Gamer's video that I talked about, if you haven't, go do that. If you did watch it, you saw his battle on the Sinai map where it, there's there's no cover whatsoever for anybody to get away from the uh, ATGMs coming in. So, anyway, let me know what you thought in the comments below. Feel free to let me know any other suggestions you might have for balancing this out. And if you disagree with me and think this is fine, let me know that too. I obviously am not going to agree with you, but I'm open to having a civil discussion on this. And if anybody from Gaijin would like to reach out to me, I am in the content creator program and I've, you've got my email. So uh, anyway, uh, I think this video has gone on long enough. I think uh, the video was... Uh, more than enough of a revisit down terrible memory lane from that battle, and I'm going to wrap it up here. So thank you all very much sincerely for watching this. We'll see you all next time for more War Thunder, and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Take care, and thank you for watching.